I almost forgot to do an after show. After show. After show. Love it. Okay, so this is gonna be a new season. We're gonna start a new season. So welcome to season two. Or season three. I have no idea what season is. But like I haven't recorded in a long time, so like season break. Love it. The only reason so the only reason I remembered to actually do this is because I was trying to figure out what, like how to edit this again, because it's been so long since I've done any of this stuff. I was like looking at my notes and I've got like a little checklist or uh, notes and things in my grimoire. And it was like after show. I was like, oh, right, shit. After show. I really enjoy doing the after shows. Or I really enjoy that the after show is a thing. So we're going to do an after show. It's going to be probably, pre- they're usually shorter. This will be probably pretty short. I have enjoyed doing this. I'm going to, I expect, do this more. Again, I'm still in this weird position where I don't like, I don't know fuck all about what's happening with me right now in terms of I'm in a, a, a huge transition period here where the chemicals in my brain are, have changed dramatically over the past month. And I think though, like I've been, I've been on the same, I've been on the same set of meds for a month. And I think that means that I should be, this should basically be the way that I feel generally speaking, like writ large. Now, another thing that I learned semi-recently is like, if you have bipolar disorder, like it's, it is kind of only a matter of time apparently until I have more episodes. And so the, the meds are there to try and make the time in between episodes be as long as possible and to make the episodes themselves be as undramatic as possible but like it, it's coming at some point so but the reason i mentioned that is because there is a possibility that i'm hypomanic right now again i'm pretty sure i'm not manic because i can stop talking and i'm not racing my my thoughts aren't just completely zooming out of my head right now i do talk fast by the way so like if and, and this will this will actually be an interesting one to look at is at some point uh, one of the things I'll do is go back and look at all the footage of when I was recording myself when I was 100% manic, and we're going to do some word counts, and we're going to see how fast I was actually talking. I know that I talk fast in general, and I think I was talking even faster then, especially with the pressure of speech, the pressure to speak stuff. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this. Welcome to season two. I, this this has turned into a little bit of a conversation, and it's going to be a little bit more of a conversation about the internet. It's going to be a little bit more of a conversation about uh, Neapolitan and Neapolitan, the, the the file format, and more to the point, the the site engine builder uh, or the website builder, and making the internet. And this this kind of like, I've seen all these posts recently about like rewilding the internet, and I think that's just a great term. It's it's really interesting to me because like I see I see some people and there's almost a tangible fear it looks like some people are trying to like no no no, i'm not yes i'm nostalgic for the internet the way that i remember it in my hazy memory of yesteryear but that's not what i and i think most of the people that i've been reading and and listening to are are really interested in we're interested in seeing what the next iteration is so like we have all these components and all these things and we have all this history of the internet and we've seen all these machinations of all these things so now we're in a position where and we're in a time period where the time is ripe to mess with things again. It's a time to to shift things around a little bit. And I think the biggest trick is can we do this? If we can do this in a way that is sustainable, right? So if I if I could and like I'm not I'm not interested in venture capital at at, at this point for any of this stuff. And I don't think I I, I don't think I'm going to be. I I don't think I don't I don't think venture capital is inherently evil because I don't think really much is inherently evil. There probably are some things. Who knows? But it's not if the goal of venture capital is to make money, that is not the goal that I'm after with the thing that I'm building. The thing that I'm building is so that people can make websites. And I want to but like it also has to be like if if I'm going to continue to work on it, I have to figure out how to be able to work on it. So there has to be some amount of way for me to have money with which to go do all the other things that I need to do that require money. I'm also not anti capitalist. I'm not trying to overthrow a system, but at the same time, I, th- I don't want, I, I don't want the, just the, the potential crushing force that a business can have on trying to extract the last little bit of shareholder value out of a thing to be an influence on how the stuff that I'm working on for this works. So not interested in venture capital at the same time, if somebody walked up and said, Hey, 
we'll give you $150 million in order to you know work on your thing and just do it. Like, okay, cool. Because I can probably for $150 million, and by the way, $20 million is actually my number. If we're, so if you want my number, it's $20 million. You want to come at me with, with a number? It's $20 million. That is the number with which I, the, like, I'm, I'm into talking about this stuff. Because at that point, I believe that I would be able to provide enough of the resources to build the thing without, and, and still have it, basically build it enough that it could isolate itself and be open source, and it is already open source, that it could sustain itself even outside the business and, and do everything I could inside the business to make sure that like as a business, it, it didn't eat itself. It didn't kill the actual spirit of the thing because I think it is possible to do that. I think you can run a hosting company that builds what amounts to, well, okay, here's, okay, here's the plan. Like, fuck it, why not? Like, here's a plan. You make a website, uh, sorry, website engine, website builder, an ability for people to make their own websites and to have their own domains. And you do this in a way that the te a technical term for this is a static site generator. So like you can build this particular website and you can take this website and you can move it from, uh, for example, you could move it from Facebook to Twitter if, if this was the way that these things worked. Like you can't move your Facebook stuff to your Twitter stuff right now. But with when it's your website, and it's especially if it's built as a static site, and which is just the technical term for like the way that these particular websites get built, you could take that and like you could run it on Neapolitan.com and that's cool. But if you get sick at Neapolitan.com, you could go and run it off of some other company example.com. And you could just pick up your stuff and move it. And you could move the name of like the website name, like the, the thing that you type into to get to your thing. You can move that too so that nobody would even know potentially that you've moved. Like it's just there's the hardware underneath and the cloud that does all this hosting stuff. Your website could just and the whatever get fuzzy with the terms for a second. But like your website could just be in the cloud and just work. And like if you don't like the it, it's it would be a little bit like service providers. It, yeah, it would so it would be a little bit like having your phone number. This analogy probably breaks down. I'm trying to think where it's gonna break down. It, so don't take it like all the way to the extremes here. But like if you can switch your phone number from ATT to T Mobile to name the phone carrier in your country, that that would be the same thing with your website. Like imagine if imagine if your social media presence was like that. If you didn't like Facebook, you could just move to Twitter. And if you didn't like Twitter, you could just move to Mastodon. But you would take all of your stuff with you because it's all your site. And it's just, it, it's, it would be just like moving your phone number. Again, it wouldn't be just like moving your phone number. There's a bunch of different things, et cetera, et cetera. But that's the general feel of the idea of the thing. So you could just move your presence and hire out underneath the, the, the cloud provider that you wanted to have. And so where it gets interesting is, okay, so imagine this. What if Apple, for example, decided, hey, you know what? We want to we want to provide everybody with a website. I think they actually did this at one point. Part of your subscription is you can have a website and we'll get and you can have your domain, we'll do the hosting or whatever. So if you're if you're if you're subscribed to ATT, oh, maybe it could actually be tied into your internet carrier. That would be interesting. What if oh, that's super interesting, actually. What if your what if your internet or what if you're, what if like your hosting and your internet and your phone and all that stuff that got bundled also provided you with a website or with website hosting? Cause, cause you still want to have control of the website and that's the, the whole purpose of the thing that I'm building so that you still have control of your stuff. You still own, like all the files sit on your computer or wherever you want to have them. Um, and then you can move them wherever you want them. But yeah, that would be interesting. But I, but Apple could do that, right? Apple could sit there and basically say, you know what? We're just going to like, let everybody have two gigs of storage space that's a website and where it gets tricky is they also would have to say like and we're going to let people have some amount of bandwidth and some amount of whatever because you can't like end up in a position by enforcing some of those rules where somebody can basically put a website up that is doing you know huge, like costing you a bunch of money like it can't cost you a tremendous like every every website can't cost you a bunch of money otherwise you're losing money right so but if if the if a, but most small websites don't need a lot of traffic and don't need a lot of bandwidth and don't need a lot of file space, so yeah, Apple could sit there. Apple could make or Google 
or anybody, but like, especially the phone carriers, I think is interesting. Could make, could make a, a website hosting service and you could just build your website and put it up there and then point your domain name to it. And it's just there. And then by the way, if you leave Apple, the whole, the whole purpose of having it be a website instead of inside of Apple. So it's something outside of them is if you leave Apple in the same way that you or and, or if you leave AT&T or if you leave T-Mobile, the same way that you can move your phone number, you can move your website. And like the people texting you don't generally speaking, know what carrier you're on, right? The same thing would be for your website, for your social media presence. Folks wouldn't know. Now, where it gets interesting is if you do something like, like I'm thinking about with the Neapolitan thing, where an ideal, an ideal version of this would be something like neapolitan.com. And the, the way that I would kind of envision the first iteration of this is you get to set up uh, your account on neapolitan.com. And so you would, like, I would get alan.neapolitan.com or myname.neapolitan.com. And on, on, on myname.neapolitan.com, it's my website. And then the two things that I can do there that become critical to this are, one, I can move those files wherever I want. But if I move them, I would lose that name, alan.neapolitan.com, right? So if, if, if I'm running, if I, me, am running neapolitan.com, in order for me to host your website, you know, your website.neapolitan.com, they have to be on my on my machines, on my computers, on my on my little bots in my cloud. But you can set up your own uh, what's called domain name, the actual website name. So instead of for me, instead of alan.neapolitan.com, it would just be alanwsmith.com. And I could host that still in the exact same place, but the name is mine. And that way I can point that name wherever I want so that if I get tired of neapolitan.com, I go somewhere else and it's cool because nobody knows because it's just my website just works. But where it gets interesting is if you have if you have a, a central hosting thing like so neapolitan.com and a whole bunch of websites are on it, you can start to do interesting things with that where people would opt in to basically say, hey, I want to have my website, which is hosted on neapolitan.com, even though it's actually alanwsmith.com. I want to, I want to like, let it participate in the, in the global search. I want to let it participate in the, the global feed so that the posts that I make go out potentially to everybody else on the entire Neapolitan website, because you could have feeds aggregated across all that stuff. So in, as a, as a central mechanism of hosting or as a central provider of hosting, you can automatically look at all the all the people that are on your on that all the people that have decided to have their websites exist there and do interesting things with them when people opt into like saying, yeah, you know, I, I want my this is here's my public content and here's the feeds that I'm making and I want these feeds to be available and this is how we put them all together. And then we could like make feeds out of that and like you could like we could make it's not a social network. It's a it's a it's a web. <laughs> it's a it's a net it's a web network. It's a network of websites. It's a I've got nothing. But totally like all the all like all these things exist. I'm just I I keep sitting here looking at this in my in my little brainy brain. And all the parts for all this stuff exist. The only thing oh yeah, and so and then and then what you do, like hosting, right? So how do we how do we do this? How do we actually get this hosted? So the first thing that I would do if I was going to set this up would be the first iteration of this. You actually have to pay for hosting. If you want to get on the apology, like somewhere you've got to, Oh, actually, by the way, right now you don't have to pay for hosting because the, the way that I'm setting up, at least initially, there's a company called GitHub, which offers a service called GitHub pages, which will let you host for free. There's also a company called Netlify where you can actually, Oh, and I actually just learned about this the other day. We can just drag a folder over and just like launch a website. And like it's free and it's up there and it's live. And I forgot, I literally forgot about that until right now. And that's very cool. Getting back to the overall idea, at some point you have like, at some point there has to be money coming into the system to support this. So ways to do that, that we know of now for the, the, the most ways are either people pay you money directly or you put ads on the site. Those are the two things. I would really like to prefer to stay away from the second one if at all possible, because there's a whole bunch of crap that comes with that that is... We'll, we'll end up in some of these networks inevitably, but I sure don't want to start there. So the goal would be to set up and basically say, hey, you know, it's four bucks a month or it's seven bucks a month to host your website here. 
and then with that, you get to go do your website and then move it and then do whatever with it. I don't know. Ah, it's just, and then, yeah. And, and, oh, so where does that go? So where that goes in the longer term is the ideal, like, so my, my ideal goal would be everybody gets to have their website. So really what you'd want to have access to on the longer term is an ability to offer free websites for basically everybody. So if you have a very small website and not a lot of, and you're not getting a lot of traffic on it, like you don't, you're not doing much with it. And there's, you know, it's only 10 pages. I don't know something. It would be awesome to be able to offer that for free and be like, you can do whatever you want on this limited area. Like we can give you this for free. We can't, we can't give you, we, we can't let it always be free for everybody for all the things because like at some point there has to be electricity flowing into these computers to turn the things on and the people making the software, the people writing the code need to be supported and paid to maintain the stuff so that that can be their job. But if we could, if we could start with a, 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 a small group of folks paying for it and then over time be able to add some free services in there or whatever, like that's how you could get some network growth. And then that's actually where you could get into some things like, Hey, okay, we're going to, we now have a decent size number of people looking at this. So we're actually going to add ads into the mix now, but we're going to do this in a really specific and a really curated way where we're in, we, the network are in control of the ads, not the, not the ad companies. And we can, cause we, and the reason I'm, I'm interested in doing that for this specifically is basically from tracking, right? So the, the goal, and you could do this several different ways, but the way that I would envision doing this would be use an ad company. You're not, I'm very wary of the amount of privacy invasion techniques and stuff that happens to us all the time. So if we could, if we could mitigate some of that by doing some amount of limiting the amount of data that's collected explicitly in the network and basically saying, okay, ad companies, like we've got a bunch of people, but you're not going to know everybody's individual address and all the individual things and whatever, like we can back off of that. But if, and if you want in cool, if you don't, that's fine. Like, here's the price we could actually make, I, I think a more, mm, what's a good way to say that a less creepy ad network <laughs> would be, would be a goal there. Cause like I, I, I do think, over time, it wouldn't surprise me. So it would be. So let me let me let me take it one step back. It would be amazing if you could actually set up something that was just funded and supported in a way that didn't require ads. Because I think I think it would be absolutely fucking beautiful if the network itself didn't have to have ads on it. Now, again, it's your website. If you want to put ads on your website, go to it because it's your website and you can do whatever you want to on it. But if we could avoid having to do it at the network level and even better, if we just didn't do it at the network level. Right. And it would take some resistance. And this is where the venture capital thing comes in. Right. Because like, if you're, if you're looking at this from a venture capital perspective, that is turning down money, like ads equals money to explicitly say the goal is to try not to do that. Or the goal is to not have to do that and to not take that money is not something that's going to be probably wildly uh, appreciated in the venture capital land. But at some point, if you're, if your business is a business at some point, there's going to be a business person who is going to make that deal, who is going to increase like, that's, that's how that's how that is the, the, the reason things are that the way they are right now is because of the way that the things work, right? The system is working as the system works and the system works now through ads and through trying to like crunch the, every little grasp of value and, and shareholder value and, and dollars that we can get out of these things. And I, I don't know, I don't know how you avoid that without trying to, to separate the, the business. <sighs> Here's an example. I used to work at the BGA tour and at the PGA tour, we had, over the, I worked there for about 22 years. So I, I saw a bunch of change on the internet back in 2000. That's where I, I first started working on it. And I got to do some really cool stuff. I was, it was super neat. I was one of the few people on the internet who had access to exclusive data because we had exclusive data because the way the golf scoring works, we had to set up all these systems to do all this golf collection. And it was really cool. Cause like I got to play with exclusive data. And so I got to do some really fun stuff on the internet. And 
part of what I was doing was trying to figure out like how to make the product better. But we also had ad teams, right? Because it's, it's an ad supported website at one point in, I don't know, some year, years ago, we, we ended up with these two mandates and the, and the first, the first mandate was to serve the tour fan. And the second mandate was to in, basically to increase revenue. I don't remember what the term was, but it was like, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're like focusing on the business and we want to make sure that we're serving the tour fan. And it was great because like serving the tour fan, like that's serving the audience, serving your, the people that you're providing for. But the trick was whenever, and I, I would ask this question in meetings a lot. I was like, okay, that's cool. We've got these two, these two priorities, which is, which, which was the first priority, which is the number one priority is the number one priority to serve the tour fan or is the number one priority to, I'm going to use the term make money. I forget what the exact term was. Is our primary goal here to make money or is our primary goal to serve the tour fan? Cause in my view of the way that these things work, you can't, it can't be both. It has one or the other actually has to be the first priority. There is a slot. There is a number one slot and there's a number two slot. But just because something's number one doesn't mean number two doesn't also get in the mix. It just means one of them really, if you're making a decision, one of them is going to lead that decision and the other one's not. And so I'd ask this question all the time. And the answer, well, they're both the, the, the top priority. <laughs> okay, uh, that's sure. Next next week, all hands meeting. So uh, yeah, we're, we're doing this stuff. Well, what's, what's our, are we serving through a fan or uh, going after the money? Well, both. Okay, cool. So the answer is clear at that point. The answer is we're trying well, the answer is serving the tour fam was secondary, but nobody wanted to say it. And like the answer, it's fine that, that serving this tour fan is second, but say it <laughs> like, and like, this is, uh, the, I'm probably making myself slightly less hireable right now, but I, cause like you, you don't, it's, that's fine. If that is your decision, that is your decision. But let's be honest with ourselves that we really do like serving the tour fan is a priority, like serving, serving the people that we're trying to make these, these cool things for is, is a goal is a primary goal, but it is not the primary goal. So if you're in a decision and the decision point is, Hey, we've got these two things and it's 50, 50 split. Guess who's going to win the dollars, not the tour fan. And I think whenever you're going to have a, like a VC backed business or a, like a, a business where, business is in charge. I think that's inevitable. Like it, it, it almost, it almost feels like, was it a totality or something where it's like, or a tautology or whatever the thing is where you say it and it's like, it's automatically its own truth. But if, if that's not the case, like what if, what if there's, what if there's actually a thing where it's like, no, we actually haven't, we're not actually purely after the dollars. Like the, the, the fundamental goal here is to provide a way for people to make websites. That is the primary goal. And for as many people as possible. I mean, like make the goal for everybody. Then if that's your driving force, but, but I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you get that through any of my understanding of how venture capital stuff works. I think for the first iteration of it, you want to try and make sure that the, the structure and the, and the folks in charge and like the, like right now I'm in charge of this because I'm the only one doing it. And the code only exists in me and GitHub and two people who've cloned it. But that, that would be my goal. Like that would, that, that is literally my goal. My goal is not to make money primarily. My goal primarily is to be able to provide a service and an app and a way for people to make websites. And then ideally to be able to make this network and to be able to make this thing happen. Okay, this turned into a very long after show. It's basically its own its own episode, but that happens with the after shows. Welcome to the after shows. Welcome to season two, everybody. Okay, I'll I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap. Appreciate you all hanging out. I'm excited about this. It is fun to be back doing this. I I don't know. I I'm excited. I feel good, and I can't tell you um, how nice it is to feel good because I haven't in a long time, and this is it's a really um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting time, but an interesting time in a good way. I think may, may you all have good ones out there. Uh, till next time, be time, be kind, take care, and we'll see you then. Cheers.